Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Johnson and I'm the CEO here at Cherryland Electric Cooperative and this month I want to inform you about an upcoming rate increase. I know it is always hard to hear that your electric rates might be going up. This is um, one of the most difficult conversations we have to have with our members. So I want to take a second this month and just explain what you can expect out of this rate increase and what's driving it. To start, let me explain what the proposed rate change is, and I'm going to focus just on the homes we serve because 95% of our membership are residential. The proposed rate increase would be a $4 increase in the availability charge, so that will take that flat monthly fee from $28 to $32 a month, and a four mils increase in the energy charge. So that will take that per kilowatt hour charge that you pay from 11.7 cents to 12.1 cents a kilowatt hour. Our average residential home uses about 700 kilowatt hours a month. So after this rate change, what that means for that home is a monthly increase in their bill of a little over 6%, or about $6.80 a month. We will be discussing this rate change at upcoming meetings in March. The board will uh, consider it in March, and if approved, it will go into effect and you will see that increase on your June bill. Let me now just take a second and explain why this rate increase is happening and kind of the timing of it. There are really um, several things driving this rate increase, none of which will be a surprise to any of you. First, like everyone, we are feeling pressure from inflation, but unlike average consumer-based inflation, utility inflation has been even higher. Since 2021, the inflation rate on a lot of the supplies we use has averaged about 40%. So what I mean by that is the increase in the average materials that we use to, for poles, wires, lines, to install the things that we use to keep your lights on, the cost of that has gone up 40% just in the last two years. And those costs range from a 30% increase in things like uh, poles to a 60% increase in things like underground wire. Transformers have been really expensive, almost a, a, we've doubled the, the cost of transformers in those two years, but overall a 40% increase in the cost of the supplies we use. The other cost pressure that we're facing is tied to the labor markets. It's a highly competitive labor market right now. In addition to that, we not only, I mean, one, let me just say, we employ the best of the best. We employ really, really technically skilled employees, so we have to make sure that our wages keep up with the market. Uh, labor costs are our second largest cost after power supply. So when we, as we continue to try to be competitive to attract and retain the best talent, we're going to see uh, cost pressures to do so. One thing I will highlight for our members, just so you know, we are one of the leanest electric cooperatives in the country. And what I mean by that is we serve more meters per employee than any other electric cooperative in the United States of our size. So we're doing a lot with a little, and it's very, very important that we continue to retain the talent we need to do so, because we obviously have the best of the best. They're able to do a lot um, and serve a lot of members per employee. And then the third cost pressure that we're managing right now is kind of tied back to that first one when I talked about the increase in the cost of the supplies that we use. We borrow money to pay for those projects, and our cost of borrowing has gone up in two ways. The interest rates are higher now than they were a few years ago, just like they're higher for you, whether you're buying a home or a car or whatever. So we have higher interest rates, and we're having to borrow more money because the cost of what we do has gone up as those supply costs have gone up. In fact, we've had about a 38% increase in the cost of borrowing over the last few years. So we have all these cost pressures from supply chain to making sure we're competitive with market wages to interest rates and our cost of borrowing that we have to manage on behalf of our members. And all of those things are leading us to what is a 6% increase for the average residential member, which I think is uh, uh, really quite reasonable when you think about the cost pressures the co-op is facing. And it's very important to me that we don't stop investing in our system and we don't stop investing in our people because that's how we are getting best in class reliability for you, which is something I talked to you about last month in my manager's column and in my video. We are delivering literally the best electric reliability and electric service in the state of Michigan. We're going to continue to do so, but to do so, it's going to cost more. And that's where this rate increase is coming from. We will be holding a member information session to discuss this rate change in greater detail and answer any questions you might have. I'll be there, the senior team will be there, we'll have members of the board there. We'll hold that meeting at our office in Gran on Tuesday, March 12th at 5.30 p.m. So that is the best place for you to come if you have questions or wanna learn more. We will also have a formal rate hearing that will take place at the board meeting on Monday, March 18th at 9 a.m. And then after that, the board will consider and take action on the rate change. 
You can find more information on our website. You can also find more details in this month's magazine, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions.